Blow me blue up. Blow me blue. Blow me blue the up. Color. I'm now known as the blow me girl. So <laughs> my dad must be so proud of me. <laughs> my only tip for you is to just smile. Just now nah, I'm joking. That shit stands for something. Oh. <laughs> smile. 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 So when is a smile? So what's smile. smile? So right. S. To put it out there, there's one of these things, right? Pre-wedding jitters that you're like, <laughs> like. You. No wonder I've got anxiety. No, not getting married. You're just not getting married. If you can go and click the subscribe button, super simple, it's just there. Go and click the subscribe button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would help us out a huge amount. It means other people will see the videos and therefore we can make bigger and better and funnier videos all for you. So make a real help. It's a small thing for you, but a big thing for us. So hopefully you can do it. Isn't that right, Soph? Yeah, hopefully you can do it. Jamie said everything, so I'm just gonna say please subscribe and we'll see you soon. What up, bitch? Hi, bitch. I can't say that to you. I can't just go, hey, what up, bitch? No, you call me what up, shorty pants. No. What up, brother? You call me your sister. That's almost weirder. No, it's not. What's up? Better to call me your, your bitch. I don't want to call you my bitch, though. Fine, call me your bitch. You, I've called you a, a, a bitch? I've never said that. No, you call me your bitch. Oh, sorry, I thought you said that I said that to you. I would never say that in a million years. Yeah, you go, what up, bitch? And I go, what up, punk? <laughs> That's our lingo. You've never... No more meow. <laughs> meow has changed. <laughs> yeah, it has. Recently, it's been a bit, because of the, the stress of the wedding, it's been a bit like, meow. Yeah, guys, I'm stressed. I'm honestly like, oof, this wedding plot gives you anxiety. We now walk into the room when we see each other, we go, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't. Like, <laughs> yes, you do. I actually said, can we please stop doing that? Like, there's been new rules <laughs> placed in the household, in the Sophie and Jamie household. No pooing with the door open. Yeah, no that's true. Well, Bear in mind, no pooing with the door open was only Jamie. It was never me. Let's just clarify that. <laughs> but Jamie is not allowed to poo with the door open. He's not allowed to poo in any other room but his bathroom. Mm. Still breaking that rule. The dog now he, shits in my bathroom as well. Can, yeah, because he can smell it. You're just like a It's a she. Shit. It's a she. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> potato, potato. No farting. That's like my biggest rule I know. and my I don't biggest ache. So all those three things. And don't kiss me in the morning until you brush your teeth. Do you know what I have to That's do That's a new one that I just slipped on in there. <laughs> okay, all right. Any more rules you want to give me? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Um, should we just not get married? <laughs> should we just do a small wedding on the beach with our bare feet? The sea and our air. <laughs> The sea in our air. The sand in my eyes. <laughs> the, 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 the sea in our air. <laughs> oh, the oh sea. I, the sea in my air. <laughs> Just like, picture the Maldives. Carb. That's the sea. Ah, oh, good God. That's the birds. What else there? Me. <laughs> walking along the sand and the shells beneath my toes. Flowing hair. Lovely flowy dress. What is the flowing snow sign last night? Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. You, because mm, you're just humming, because you're so calm. And then I walk up and we get married. Flowers in my hair. Who else is there? Your best men, mm -hmm. a couple of our friends, and our family. Hey, it sounds quite nice. We Bare feet. I guess I said it before. Say I won't be taller than you in the photos. <laughs> Thank God. I, I we we don't have to throw the big wedding. We don't have to do it. We can just throw a calm, happy little. Casual wedding. Can't do that. We can. It's too late now. It's not. Nothing's ever too sign, late. Sign sealed, delivered. And when I say sign sealed, delivered, there's contracts that sign sealed, <laughs> delivered. We are locked <laughs> in. So on that happy note, shall we begin the podcast? Yeah, let's begin. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nearly Weds Podcast. I'm going to be cheesy, and I'm going to be like a bit uh, and things like that. Oh no, you don't have to be. <laughs> I'm gonna be. No, honestly. I'm, I'm gonna we be. We can save it for behind the closed door. Well, I'm gonna be. You're epic. You are. You right are. back at you, shorty pants. You are. Okay. You you are so great in every <sighs> single way. And sometimes you don't realise it. I don't think. No. I, okay. Right. This is a therapy podcast. Well, I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in hard. This <laughs> no. One. Come on. Because we do. We, a lot of the podcasts. I think people would think that we're not. You know. We we jab at each other and stuff like that. But you're you're, you're the coolest motherfucker out there. You're so, so are you motherfucker. You're so pretty and you're so wonderful. I feel very lucky to be 
any any clothes. Yeah, what the hell's going on? <laughs> what the hell's going on what's here? What's going on here? I don't know what's going on. I just feel like feel like offloading a little bit. Oh, okay. And I love the fact that we get to do a podcast together and just talk nonsense. Oh, I love it too. Hey, Sophie's mum's here this week. Um, we got to talk about the fact that we left a dildo in her bathroom. We didn't. I took the dildo out of the bathroom. I'm so worried about what else is in the dildo. But the, the I mean, sorry, not what. But actually, what was even worse was you know when my sister came round and she, I took her upstairs and we, I was giving her all my summer clothes because she's going to Australia. Mm -hmm. And I opened up this box and in the box was where I'd shoved the dildo from my mum's bathroom, <laughs> hidden it in that box, and she's rummaging through the box. She was like, ah, this huge dildo. I was literally just sat there. This thing flew it practically in my mum's face, and I was like. Well, that's that. That's that. Then, when you're when you're stressed and things like that, you probably don't um, you don't get a bit as frisky as one another. But to the point where we weren't as frisky. Sorry, I actually don't understand. Do you think we're at couples therapy? <laughs> like, do you know what this podcast is about? Sorry. I don't like. There's something that's gone on. Tweak in the brain. Yeah, I don't know. I had the wildest sex dream about Sophie last night. And it then he, I said, well, "Have you never had a sex dream before?" And he went, "Not about you." I was like. <laughs> Perfect. I have had it about you, but last night it no, was. You haven't. I, I have. You have had, it. You haven't. I have. You haven't. I have. When you have a sex dream about someone, it's always like, <laughs> whew, it's like that's when it really kicks in. Oh, uh, have you ever had that? <laughs> Around <laughs> random people. <laughs> Who are you having sex dreams about with? <laughs> I told you, you had about, about that boy at uni. Oh, and you went up to him and you said it. Yeah, but I don't have a, I don't have a feeling towards him. Well, I had a sex dream about my future fiance Sophie. And um, I had a dream. I'm your current fiance, your future <laughs> wife, you idiot. Oh God! <laughs> your future fiance. What's got Mercury's in retrograde? And it has hit this household hard. It is doom and gloom and really strange vibes. Sophie is so anxious at the moment. She can't. can't eat. She can't stop cleaning. <laughs> Guys, I can't sit to stop cleaning. Like I see a speck on the side of my eye. I order, zap, just... boom, 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 zap arrives. It's just bags of cleaning products. And I'm like washing, I'm not even joking. Every ounce, every cupboard has been reorganized about six times. I don't know what's going on. It's honestly, I, had, I was speaking to my friend. He's like, what's that noise in the background? So I was like, and I got my phone. I went, she's cleaning, she's cleaning again. No, Jamie Texas so therapist. Jamie Texas therapist went, Mal, is Sophie okay? She can't stop cleaning. And she did said how many times for how many hours a day? Jamie was like, a lot. As, as I come in with my Hoover and then the mop. And then you came over with the Hoover and you went, Who are you messaging? I went, Oh, what is my therapist? And you went, Let me read the message. And I went, Oh my no, God. And I was like, Help me. Help me. I don't know what's happened. January hit me. And I was like, Honestly, New Year's Eve. I think it's because you, you left me for New Year's Eve. Yeah, everyone weep and cry for me. That's why right. you left me alone with the dog and <laughs> sodded off to Scotland to drink and sent me photos of you eating caviar while I was sat at home eating a Wagamama's with the dog. <laughs> like, fuck you. No wonder I've got anxiety. We started the year, we're getting married with a bang, didn't we? <laughs> oh, I love you so much. You're like Monica from Friends at the moment. It's just, it's like honestly cleaning everything, which... I mean it's not clean at the moment. <sighs> Can't wait to get back and get my hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie's mum is staying with us and she's honestly like, these two are absolutely nuts. <laughs> no, mum was like, whew, you guys give me anxiety. <laughs> she's like, whoo. You went and met my dad with your mum? <gasps> we did. Me and my mum went and met your dad and Katia. How was that, my stepmom? How was that? It was so lovely. They got on so well. It was so relaxed. I didn't feel awkward. You know, sometimes those sorts of situations, you feel a bit nervous. Mm -hmm. Didn't feel nervous at all, everyone. It was so easy and relaxed. You weren't invited, but that was fine. I wasn't because I was doing radio. But also, I think it was nice you didn't come. Have you got a burp that's coming out of your mouth? Is that what it is? Well, so you try drinking a kombucha before you come on to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you butcher. <laughs> do you know what it keeps happening to me recently as well? I, do, I dread to think. Okay, I don't know why this keeps happening. I don't know if anyone has... Do you, if you rub your nipple, do you do you feel like a, it, it feels sensitive? Yes, because I'm a girl. No. And when I'm on my period, yeah. <laughs> when I rub my left nipple, yeah. I, I think you're taking like female hormones or something. <laughs> I'm not. I think you Estrogen, are. you think I'm taking estrogen? Well, it was once that I saw you and you were trying to milk your nipple. <laughs> 
this was when I first met him and I was like, what is he doing? And I was dating somebody, one of your friends, and he said he does that, he milks his nipple. And I was like, fuck that boy's weird. And here I am now. This was about six years ago. When I rub my left nipple, I, I get, I, I feel like a sense of like, uh, like sadness. And, 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 the, and the only song I think of is nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I'd rather go and eat worms. I've never heard that song before. <laughs> Sorry, are you, what's happened? I'm really worried about you this podcast. You're being incredibly strange. You rub your left nipple and you feel sad. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. It's I like Dorothy, like, take me home. Like, rubbing your left nipple. You want to, like, go to a place when you were younger. You keep talking about childhood as well. He keeps popping, chatting about it, like, his school days. I tell you what, why don't we go into... Listeners' messages. Thank you, everyone, for writing in with the listeners' messages. This one, they want to keep anonymous. Hey, guys, currently listening to the first 2023 episode and just had to share my experience I had with my ex-boyfriend. We've been together for quite a few years and felt our relationship needed a good laugh. So I decided to have a bit of fun, have a laugh with him. I ordered a candy thong. <laughs> And told him to wait outside the room whilst I put it on. I told him to come back in, and when he did, I burst out, surprise, with a jokey tone. To where he said, with the most straight face, take it off. It makes me feel sick. Oh my God. He was so genuinely unamused that he slammed the door behind him and he was retching. What the hell? <laughs> Imagine if you did that. <laughs> We had a big argument. I left the house and went to see my mates. I got my friend's house, dropped my bag in the living room and went upstairs to tell her everything that had just happened. As we came back downstairs, I saw that another one of my mates had found the thong and was eating it. It <gasps> no. had literally been on my bare vagina <laughs> an hour earlier. Safe to say he's now an ex and my friends have never let me forget it. By the way, I love you guys so much. <gasps> no, I can't. <laughs> Eating. I used to always buy them like at school the thongs and eat them because I thought it was like quite good. I'm not worried about the thong but I'm worried about the anus bit it goes up the butthole I know I'm worried about the vagina <laughs> if you walked in with a candy thong what would I do with that <laughs> you get candy bras as well what a bad what's that boyfriend like what's his fucking problem that's so rude if you did that I'd be like we're over we're over this one is going to be anonymous and it's continuing on from the sex theme. Mm -hmm. So you ready for this? Mm -hmm. I've wanted to share this story for a while now because it's too funny not to share. I went on a second date with a guy and after a meal out, we didn't want the night to end. So we went for a, no a late night walk. We found this platform that was situated right by the sea and ended up getting a bit frisky against the wall. <laughs> as he finished, I felt funny and fell to the floor. Sorry, as he finished. Oh my God, oh, that's, that's vile. Quite brutal. I felt funny and fell to the floor. <laughs> wow, he did a good job. I had a big long coat on, my leggings down my ankles and his semen all down my leg. The poor guy thought I had died and started having a panic attack. As you can imagine, it looked pretty bad and he thought he was going to prison. I thankfully just fainted. So a few minutes later, I came out and he breathed the biggest sigh of relief on his life. We walked back to the car and not surprisingly, I didn't see him again. So what was his, how big was his willy? What the fuck? She fainted after they had sex. That is crazy. I don't know why, but the idea of people fainting makes me laugh so much. I fainted before. <laughs> loads. I used to faint loads as a child. I'd run outside, like now, my mum put me on loads of jumpers on top of me. And I'd run, 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 doing all the things. And then I'd come into the heated house and every time I'd faint. I'd be like, I feel really sick. And mum would be like, oh, catch her head, she's going to faint. And I'd be on the floor. So did you ever have crazy hair day at your school for Red Nose Day? <laughs> At my school, we had, we had Mufti Day. Oh, we had Mufti Day, but I think for Red Nose Day, we'd do Crazy Hair Day. And <laughs> Get my, out of here, Crazy Hair Day. I know, we were crazy. And my mum, because she's so arty, thought she, she would make mine twist each little individual piece of my hair into like twist, 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 until it'd warm up and then clip it. So I had like all these worms on my head. <laughs> anyway, by the end of the day, I was like, ow, my head's in <laughs> agony. So I was like pulling them all out. Obviously, my hair was literally in a palm. And then I went to the dentist and I was getting my teeth done. <laughs> and apparently I just fainted while mid getting my braces fitted with my hair like that. And then my mum got the giggles so much. The dentist asked her to leave the room because she was laughing. He was like, why are you laughing at your child's fainting? She couldn't stop laughing. Ah, uh, there we go. 
That's so good. Another story. Ah, I have another story, which is a cute proposal. Me and my now fiancé have been listening to your podcast every week from the very start. We have a little weekly routine where we drive to the closest city to get a coffee and listen to your podcast together Aww. every Monday. I love that. I love that. Why don't we do things like that? We, you, honey, we can. We're going to start doing all this. At the end of every episode, when you always say, if you're thinking of proposing, do it, I always give him a little elbow nudge. <gasps> Little did I know, he had bought a ring in the summer and had it all planned to propose last weekend when he took me away for my birthday surprise. It was the perfect night. Our journey home on the Monday was obviously started with the latest episode, but this time I didn't need to give him a little elbow nudge as I have the most beautiful ring in my finger. And I cannot wait to marry my Jamie. Lydia, you gave me goosebumps. I love you guys. Can Thank you so much for filling our Monday evenings with laughter together and for encouraging him to propose. He doesn't know I've sent this message, so it would be lovely to see his reaction if it reads out, love Lydia and Jamie. Jamie and Jamie, Lydia. Jamie, you big legend. Lydia, you big sweetheart, and we wish you both a lifetime of happiness. Oh my God, love that's you amazing. Guys. We've got another <clears throat> lovely proposal message from Jay. Dear Jamie and Sophie, me and my now fiancé are huge fans of the podcast and have been listening since day one. I just want to say thank you so much as you have given me the confidence to ask the woman of my dreams to be my wife Saturday, De Saturday 17th of December at Somerset House. That's when we got engaged. We got engaged then? Oh my God, we're engagement twins. Oh my God, I love that. Jay... I had it planned for months and months to propose on ice, but it hadn't quite thought about the fact I can't skate. So I decided to practice the week before. But as soon as I got on the ice, I fell straight on my back. I'm getting a mood. I just love this. At like that everyone... moment, I realised, shit, what am I going to do? I pushed on and kept practicing until I was passable. So after getting all my friends and family together, it was finally time. We stepped on the ice. I was so wobbly and shaky, maybe <laughs> due to the champagne we had before to calm my nerves. Each lap, I got more and more nervous until we pulled over to the side in front of friends and family. My family gave me the nod. Now was the time. I gave her a speech and got down on one knee. She said yes. We kissed and hugged, turned around and realised that everyone on the ice was stood around clapping and cheering. We couldn't stop crying in happiness. It was honestly the best day of my life. I can't wait to marry her. I told her afterwards that the ring had been in our memories box, which had all of our tokens from our dates in the past and under our heads, where we slept for months without her noticing. We finished the night off with lots of celebrations. We're going to start listening to the pod from the beginning to get all the helpful tips for planning our wedding. So thank you for the pod. We love it. That's really, really got me that he went practicing on the ice skating all on his own in the evenings till he could do it. That's like movie material. This is why I love the podcast because people listen and they just get proposed and all these things. It's just it's so amazing. Wonderful. It's just amazing. We have a lovely propose the pod as well, um, which we love to do. It's where you propose the pod to someone else and we're going to pick our favourite of the month and then you're going to come on for a live episode. Guys, I know you guys like the tune, the little jingle that we do, but... Propose the pod, propose, propose the, the pod. pod. I think we're getting a bit boring at it, but we want some more inspo. So if you guys have any little jingles for propose the pod, can you send them in to us and then we can play those jingles out to you guys <sighs> before we propose the pod. Even if they're just going, propose the pod, propose, propose the pod. Uh, yeah. I love that. Send it in to us at Nilly Weds Podcast. Okay, we have a proposal pod from Mole who says, Hi guys, absolutely love the pod. And I just wanted to share a fun story with you for Propose the Pod. I live and work in Shanghai and always listen on my way home from work, and it just makes my week. On my way home from work last week, I was on my way to find my e-bike, and there was a police officer taking note as I parked it in the wrong place. He was obviously annoyed, but I had a massive, massive smile on my face and I was just giggling away listening to you guys. So I explained in Mandarin why I was laughing and it turns out he spoke English. And so we ended up listening to the episode for five minutes and then he downloaded Spotify so he continued listening and he didn't give me a ticket for my e-bike. Whoop. So now some random Shanghainese man is happily listening away. Had the most amazing wedding and thank you for providing such a fun pod, Mole. I love that. Isn't that amazing? That is so funny. I love that you didn't get a ticket as well. That's the end, Soph. Um, uh, anyone who wants to send us in any messages, any Propose the Pod jingles, or Propose the Pod, anything at all, please, please do. Just email us, contact at nillywedspodcast.com or slide into our DMs at nillywedspodcast. That's the end of... Listeners' messages. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a big, big guest on again today. Huge. She was on before, she came on, and she gave us one of the 
highest videos I think I've ever seen on TikTok. Georgina, who's on before, she is a wedding planner. She told us to blow me at the beginning of the wedding and she explained the whole uh, acronym about what it is and all these different things. It was an amazing moment for us. She's coming back on to calm our nerves to talk more about wedding planning. She's just got married as well, so she's got lots of tips. Please welcome back to the podcast, Georgina. Big congratulations, you just got married. I did. Sophie and I are stressed. Yes. We're really stressed. Okay, how many months have you got to go? Well, we're meant to be getting married in... Meant to be? Yeah, I keep saying this to everybody (laughs) and everyone's like, you are. We're meant to be getting married in April officially and we are getting married in May. And I feel like my head's about to explode. (laughs) You're in the pre-stress bit. So if this feels bad, it, it's going to get worse. I feel sick all day long. You've got to break down the wedding and remember what it actually is. And it's not the cute being in love bit. Nobody actually really cares about that. It's about drink, music and food. Like if you've got those... But sometimes you just think, but why? Like why, but why are we doing yeah. that? I'm going to tell you my big secret now. So yeah. you ready? Okay. The wedding is not for you guys. It's about you guys. It is not for you guys. That's it, relief. You've invited people to it because you want them to have a good time. So when people plan a wedding, they're trying so hard to think, what are we going to like? What do we want to do? It's not literally not about you. You guys will be off doing speeches, off taking photos, I mean, talking to everybody. How do I say it without saying it? I had the best day of my life on our proper wedding, our big wedding, but it's our guests had a better time. They were free yeah. drinks, cocktails, beer pong, watching the speeches, dancing, all of these things. And everybody plans their wedding thinking that it's all about them too and this love and blah, blah, blah. It's not. It's not. And Judy, can I say, we? there's like so much pressure to like, it's meant to be the happiest moment of your life. It's not the happiest moment of your life. There's no way. It's not like, actually, that's a lie. There, there was one moment of our wedding, which is the best moment of our entire lives. The and end it of was it. A, the, a genuinely, the very end, the last song, it was New Year's Eve. We did wow. the we did the canons. Mm. All of our guests all get, and this will happen at your wedding because it's inevitable. Everybody gathers on the dance floor. You do that last song. It's frigging epic. That was the best moment of our lives. And now I'm buzzing that it's just done. Yeah. It's just done. Because it, it was so much fun. But the bit that I love about it is everybody's still talking about it. Everybody's downloading their photos. Everybody's posting about it. That's, that's the bit that gives you the, yeah, that was cool. It was worth the stress. Does that make you feel a bit better, Soph? Because it makes no. me feel, okay, good, it doesn't make <laughs> me I, No, it does. And I, I, I like, but I already knew that. And I, like I've said it a million times, I'm just going to be honest. I always wanted like a 10 people wedding barefoot on the beach in the Maldives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now we're doing this big 200 people wedding and I'm feeling more stressed and more stressed. You're, you're feeling you're stressed about it and I, you're feeling really because stressed. Because it is for everybody else. What are you actually stressed about? Are you stressed about the day running or are you stressed about the plans that you've got in place? I'm just stressed about everything. Like I haven't even tried on my dress. I did hear something that you didn't have a photographer. Don't have a yeah. photographer. We're meeting, we're speaking to someone tonight. Okay. What's happened this year, if we're being really honest, is that we're suddenly in 2023, the year that we're meant to get married. You are getting married. I know, yeah. No, I don't know why I see you saying we're meant to be getting <laughs> married. Me. This is why I'm you guys are stressed. So you haven't even put a... Because uh, like, I secured the like date. Him, but we're meant to be <laughs> doing it in three months. Honestly, if Sophie could have never met me, I think she would probably... <laughs> she honestly would have never met me. Should we just sell the wedding? I think, do you know what it is? I'm not good. I don't like the feeling no, yeah. of being stressed. I just, in my mind, I'm like... Why would anyone do something that causes you stress? For other people. <laughs> this yeah. is the thing, this is what it all comes back to. Why am I so stressed for other people? So are you legally getting married in the UK? Yeah. Meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you doing for that? We're getting married at Chelsea Westminster. Meant to be. <laughs> no, that, that, with just family and then some really, really close friends, like very a small amount of friends. You'll love that. Sophie likes going out and meeting people and having dinner and all those kind of things, but actually she doesn't like being centre of attention. She actually shies away from that. And she's marrying someone who does like being centre of attention and that's causing stress. That's me and my partner, but the opposite way around. My partner really? is you. Just once the big stuff is booked in, just leave it for a little bit and just say to yourself, you haven't got a huge amount of time, but just be like, (laughs) we're just going to leave it for two weeks. We're not even going to talk about it. not going to think about it. And then that might give you the energy to relook at it and be like, right, what are we doing? Sometimes just talking through the wedding helps, helps so much. Like talk to your planner, talk to me. I'll talk like just saying it all out loud makes you go, oh shit, actually. And actually it's so true. If you talk it through on the actual wedding day as well, it's we're arriving at six in the evening or we're arriving at five let's say people are going to sit there we're going to have a ceremony that's going to be lovely that's going to be you 20 the ceremony yeah, yeah the, the ceremony's booked and cool. the and the officiant person has been booked we're meeting them 
We then, that's going to take 20 minutes. We then move through. We have a dinner. Dinner's lovely. That's done. The hard thing, I got to do a speech. That's pretty hard, but that's okay. Yeah. We then get up. We do our dance. By this time, it's 10 o'clock. It's then music. Everyone's drunk. We'll have for time. Done. It's five hours. On paper, that is it. Do you have a coordinator on the day? Yeah, uh, well, I hope, I think our wedding partner is going to be there on the day, but definitely someone from her team will be there. Okay, as, as long as you've got somebody who is moving you around that day, you guys will not think about anything, honestly. Yeah. And I, it's so hard to believe that. And even for myself, when it was coming up to my wedding, and I tell people this yeah. and I'm like half lying because I haven't, haven't been married before. On my wedding, I sat there and thought, I don't care. I don't care what's really? happening. I'm, everyone's having a great time. There's nothing that could have gone wrong that would have changed it so much that it would ruin anything. Nothing, yeah. Nothing's going to happen, honestly. it's. I've done weddings before where the caterers haven't turned up and we've ordered pizza from Domino's. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And it's a lot, nobody's going to sit there and be like, oh, this free pizza and free drink is... Uh, Really, really shit bad. yeah yeah you're so right people are just in and it is a lovely experience and it is so nice and everyone's there celebrating your love yeah i would just love to be a guest at my own wedding. this oh, honestly <laughs> i would love to go back and just, like, just be at my I wedding because it was sick <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny we did the first thing we ever did like as a couple um on a tv show we did the chris and rosie ramsey show nice and rosie ramsey said on that show she said having a wedding is actually pretty shit because you're stressed you're nervous you're talking to everyone it's really hard you start to hate each and other you start to hate yeah each other. yeah it's it, and it's all part of it and then that's why you have to like it gets this close and you're like why the fuck are we doing this that's when you go oh it's for everybody else is it's, it normal that that people yeah. have but that why <laughs> and it's actually <laughs> partly <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing because that's the thing it's because I'm hoping that you love the people you're inviting you're yeah. thinking like for us it was a way of thanking everyone to be involved in our journey yeah. we've been together a long time and it was everybody coming together yeah. and just getting absolutely smashed having a great time we had a really lovely ceremony which was the bit that was like oh they're in love this is cute like it was yeah. lovely and then it was to drink drink and eat and party so and chat right. and did people get your wedding guests from the wedding list we didn't do a wedding list we just wanted cold hard cash <laughs> Oh my God, lovely. <laughs> I just want, we've got like- just give me cash. Yeah, right. just give me cash. Oh, I like... want money in a card and then we'll put it towards a honeymoon. Like I didn't want any- Oh, lovely. I Do didn't it... want the stress of picking stuff. And I could hear you guys being like, we're having that. And I'm like, what if nobody buys you that? That's so awkward. <laughs> I, this is what I'm thinking. I've like I devised the most ridiculous- You're like, he's going to have to buy you all that shit after because you're going to be so depressed after the wedding. <laughs> you I'll didn't get your home, pizza like, oven. No gifts, just one tiny box. Like, you we... got one bowl. <laughs> it's true. One spoon from a parent. It's it's true. We're going to sit at home poor with just a jug in our hand. Yeah, I can picture you guys walking around going, yeah, take it, take it, put it in the cart. Like, okay, <laughs> good luck with that. We're also moving house. We're like, oh, we'll need to furnish the house because everyone will buy our house. Why wedding. does everybody buy a house when they're getting married and get uh, a dog? You guys are idiots. Like, your idiot. dog's cute, but yeah, honestly, get, people mm. add on the most stressful things you could ever do all at the you're same the time house as getting married. And the dog. So we're both in it together, and you're the one who wanted the big old big white wedding yeah so buckle up honey yeah, yeah I, you should be planning then but, yeah. but, but I and think and you're not <laughs> you're not <laughs> you're not planning I love this person more than anything Sophie loves me more than anything but also there is something which is it's like pre-wedding jitters that you're like, you are, I haven't had that. No, I haven't had that. You haven't had no, that. no, no, not from me, I swear. No, not pre winning. Uh, oh, first of all, of this, Jamie. I've, I've explained it wrong. Oh, let me put this down. Do you want to start again? No, I, I've, go I've, again. I've, I've explained it not from us, but like the fact that you are, feel anxious about the wedding I think doesn't mean. Jitters is quite different. I think, I it's, think it's, anxiety of a wedding yeah. is very normal. It's, it's great for my business because that's when people book a coordinator because they go, fuck this. That's what I don't I want mean. to do it by myself. And they just, you have got to get professionals to help you. It's, you can't possibly know what you're supposed to be doing when you haven't done a wedding. So you have to speak to people for them to say to you, this won't work. Everybody's watching you. You guys are in a bit of a different position as well that everybody's waiting to see pictures. Pictures are going to be important. Photos are going to take them on like a Nokia camera or something. Yeah. You said you wanted, I listened to your Sorry. thing on the way here. You said you want a hundred frames and you want to put all your Nokia pictures in there, do you? <laughs> Get Granny Scotland, my granny, to use a Nokia phone and just take photos. Uh, we totally much. fucked it. We're going to end up with no money because the wedding's so expensive, just a jug and no photos to remember it. <laughs> and a spoon as a gift. <laughs> and I'm going to be mad and immensely. I've been so anxious. <laughs> I, I promise you, I promise you it's worth it. And also, I think a wonderful thing to always do as well, Soph, is hmm. to, to look at your engagement ring. <laughs> look at it. Other hand, look at it. And just go, okay, th- th- remember the reason why we fell in love and the reason why we're doing it. And the greatest thing about getting... <laughs> 
This is so wet. <laughs> Look at the Jesus. ring. I know, it's getting a bit baggy there. This fine. is a little bit cute. You know Fuck you guys. You're speaking to the wrong person here. Yeah, I'm yeah. not for cute, I'm for uh, drinks. All right. <laughs> all right. Me just pondering at me. Why is Sophie at your wedding? Ring. <laughs> just, <laughs> Sophie, you're late to the wedding, stop looking at your ring. <laughs> Jesus. Just looking into the ring. All right, sister. Watching our life in that little ring. Of all mine. right, I hear you. All right. Is it all worth this? <laughs> okay, Jordan. What we do need is uh, last time you came on and you mentioned blow me. I which did. Uh, can you repeat what it was again? Maybe we can't. Oh, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Okay. So blow me was quickly. blow me was bouquet out of water, lady garden low. One hour before your ceremony, wrists and ankles, move your engagement ring, energy, fucking vibe. You're the, yeah, one, you're the, the vibe. Vibe, baby. Okay. Right, I need to move up my energy. There we go, honey. Yes, yeah, come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Woo! All and right. just, just for everyone that freaked out at home, it's not an anagram. It's an acronym. Oh, yeah, they didn't like that, did they? <laughs> Sorry. I'm really <laughs> hoping that you have something else to give us a today. A little tip. You want a little tip? Uh, you want I, a little tip? I want something that's going to be awesome. Okay. What, can you give us something else no that's going to help Jesus. us? Jesus. I know, sorry. My tip today is on how to have the best ceremony. So the ceremony is the most important part of the wedding, let's be honest. It should be the nicest part for you. And my only tip for you is to just smile. Smile. Now I'm joking. That shit. It stands for something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. was, that, was that it? Okay. Smile. 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 So wedding say smile. So what's smile? So right. S for the acronym. S is for seats. So oh. you need reserved signs in your ceremony. There is nothing more awkward in this entire world than your bridesmaids walking down the aisle and then not having somewhere to sit, and then they got to walk shuffle back down the aisle or. That's sick so, 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 so awkward so you need reserved signs with people's names on for whoever you need so you probably want families and whoever walks down the aisle Great. and also for the seats one aisle seats make sure your ushers make people sit on the aisle people will leave a gap and then you look like your billy no mates because when they take the photos there's nobody sat in the aisle seats yes. move them in move them in m is for middle you've got to be in the middle of that aisle there is no point spending all this money on these photos if you stand off to the left and then when you take that shot, the money shot, you're off to the left and you'll look at it and be like, fuck. Oh my God. Gotta stand in the middle. That's fantastic. Middle. Okay. okay. I is for I'm looking. Okay. So this is you two need to decide this together. Every couple needs to decide this together. I'll ask you first, Jamie. What mm -hmm. point are you going to turn around and look at her when she's walking mm -hmm. down the aisle? Oh, when I've wiped my tears away. <laughs> Cute. Uh, nice answer. Uh, no, I, I think... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that moment. So I, I think when everyone, I hear the feet shuffle and the people move and things like that, and then I take a breath and I'll turn around. Oh, you know, honestly, just cry. It's going to be so, so, it's so, gonna be so pathetic. I will, I'll cry, I'll cry. I'll be in bits. I'm but bits. is that when you want him to look? Do you? Because uh, I, I wanted to be, to I wanted to be at the start of the aisle. Yeah, I wanted him to turn around and see the whole shebang, like yeah, the whole look. Me too. Whereas in films, they get right to the front and then they go. Oh. No, I, no, I know. I'm so with you. So you need to, you need best man or someone to be able to say, look now. She's there. I'm going to look round and I'm going to look round and go. I'm going to look round and I'm going to see your dad at the end, just with his shoulders going. I don't know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where she is. Sorry. And you are honestly on a plane back to the UK. <laughs> but isn't this why you're legally getting married first? So you shouldn't have to worry about that bit. Yeah, locking her down. You've got her, quick. you've trapped her, it's fine. Uh, okay, tra trapped So her. I'm thinking, Sophie, you want him to look when you're right at the start of the yeah, aisle. So you I'm, need to turn around at the right point. Great but one. that's a personal thing between couples for whether they want I'm with you. Where they want to see it. But I wanted the full. L is for long kiss. Do not peck when they say you're married, you've got to kiss long. And if you can deep dip, they'll fucking love it. Oh. They'll love it. I will show you my ceremony photo after. It's honestly my entire wedding, all of the stress was worse that one photo alone. You so need I get to a kiss snog, a real proper snog. Proper snog. If yes. you, like I've seen photographers so many times go to take, they're standing in the right spot. The people are in the middle, they're ready. And then they kiss, peck. And it's like, but I missed it. I can't take yeah. a photo, like kiss for long, enjoy it. Like proper snog. Proper safe. snog and deep dip. Oh my God, I can't wait. <laughs> and then E is for exit. Exit fucking wild. Do not just walk down the aisle. Oh, yay, we're married. Fucking throw your bouquet in the air. Stop in the middle, have another kiss. High five people on the way down. Cheer. Like the, the ceremony is the only bit that differs it from a party to a wedding. 
and they're not meant to be boring. You know when you you see like Disney films and you're like, oh my god, everything is so like they live this amazing life is sometimes tricky and hard and stressful and all these different things. And actually, when you remember that why you're doing it and you're having fun, yeah, it's about having fun, then it relieves some of that stress. Yeah, that- well, the second you get to that ceremony bit and they start talking about you guys and why you're there, you'll be like. Ugh. This is this is cool. This is fun. This is so it is so worth all the drama. Okay, just a quick reminder. Smile for the ceremony. What is it? Okay. S for seats, reserved signs, and don't let anybody miss the aisle seats. Get everyone crammed in. M is for middle. You have got to be stood in the middle of that aisle. Don't ruin your photos by being stood off to the left or the right. I is for I'm looking. Make sure you're turning around at the right point. You want to see the whole shebang. L is for long kiss, proper long, deep dip. Go for it. And E is for exit well. Go go fucking wild. That's the energy bit again. <laughs> Regina, I want to say a huge thank you. You're a complete legend. You you, you make it just make us feel so much better. Good. And, and also, everyone, you can go and check out your page, your TikTok. We can leave all the descriptions and links below. I'm basically just sharing my entire wedding on my TikTok now. Oh, great. I, We're gonna go. You could just steal it all. Yeah. We're gonna steal everything. Just change the names. And Georgina, what's your company called again? Georgina Rose Events. Georgina Rose it's Events. Very good. Um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast Pleasure. again. Thanks for having so me much. again. We just love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey. Honey, do you feel a little bit calmer? A little bit. I'm going to speak to Georgina on the sly. I'm going to go through it. I think you should. I think you should talk I'm to her. I'm going to call Lucia, my wedding planner. We're going to nail it down. I'm just going to get on top of it. Okay, we have our wedgie rather today, Sophie Habu. Uh, the wedgie rather is very simple. We get married, mm-hmm. but we can never, ever have sex. Yeah. We have to live like nuns. We can't have sex. We can't do it. We can never have sex again. Or we never get married, but we can have sex. What do you do? 100% never get married and have sex. Really? Yes. You, what? So you want to never have sex just for that one moment <laughs> where you can walk down the aisle in your white suit and go and do- sing to whatever that t- theatre production thing is you want to do. The greatest showman. The greatest showman. You want to not have sex for the rest of your life. And you can't have porn. I don't. You can't ma- masturbate. <laughs> so good luck. I don't masturbate. <laughs> no, I actually don't masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't. Why are you laughing? Because you're making me nervous. You Do you really, masturbate? You look red. Do you masturbate? No. <laughs> Anyway, what would you do? You want to get married? I, I really want to get married to you, but also... Never to have sex. No, I think you're right. I think the deal would be is that we probably wouldn't get married and we'd continue to have sex. Lovely. What if it was five years? No, not getting married. You're just not getting married? Not getting married. Sorry, you little mix. <laughs> oh, she's a naughty little one, Sophie. <laughs> five years, no sex? you joking. Like, what? I'm with you, honey. Okay, okay, okay. I, we've agreed on a wedge. One rather. year. <laughs> Six months I could do. Six months is all right, isn't it? I could pass that test. That's our wedding, rather. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have our wedding favour of the day. As always, we love our wedding favours. Um, they're the tips and tricks that we are bringing to our wedding and hopefully your wedding. So whatever it is, please keep sending them in. And our wedding favour today is from Hannah. Hi guys, I've listened to the podcast since the beginning. Um, my wife and I got married last August and it was honestly the best day of our lives. It was just perfect. But I listened to your most recent episode and feeling a little bit stressed and anxious about planning the wedding and I just wanted to offer a few tips um, and nuggets of advice. Um, please don't sweat the small stuff. Um, the one thing that kept me sane in planning the wedding was that at the end of the day, the people that matter really don't mind and the people that mind, well, they don't bloody matter. You're organising at the end of it a massive party for your best and most loved family and friends so even if it was just an empty room with a bar music they wouldn't care it would still be the best day ever celebrating with you so do not sweat the small stuff oh i love that isn't that amazing it's so true and that everything you said is so true the ones that care matter don't care and the ones that do care don't matter there you go that's exactly Damn it. Damn straight, honey. Um, hey, before we end the podcast um, and say a big thank you to everyone listening again, our producer Jack has a present for me and you, or just me, and I don't know <gasps> what it is. Another present? We have a present from producer Jack. Jack, what it's is like the... Christmas Day all over the time. Oh, it says fragile on it. Obviously, everyone heard you saying you're so anxious and it was all building up and it was yeah. quite stressful. And we've had loads of lovely messages. And one particular listener called Ella has sent in 
At present, maybe it's better if you open it, Sophie. Why are your people so kind? People are so kind. <gasps> it's beautifully wrapped. Oh. Oh my gosh. Art by Ella. Oh my gosh, another really beautiful card. Which says on it? Dear Sophie and Jamie, congratulations on your engagement. I absolutely love the podcast. You are both so funny. I now look forward to the first hour of my Monday mornings just so I can listen to it. Another congratulations for becoming dog parents. I've been keeping up to date with the Insta and she's so adorable. I hope you like your portrait. I've drawn for you as a memory of when she was a puppy. I know how puppies are. So I'm sure she's grown and changed so much. I heard about Jamie's allergies to Bobby I hope that all gets sorted so it'd be such a shame if you had to rehome Jamie lol jokes <laughs> aside I really don't do hope you both have a wonderful wedding enjoy being new owners of the cutest little sausage no no oh my god are you oh my god oh my god. you're gonna cry <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. that has made me cry <laughs> Thank you so much. Art by Ella.co.uk. We'll leave everything in the description below. I want to say a big thank you to every single person who listens to this. It goes far and wide, this podcast, and it means a huge amount. This little people that listen to it and do things little like this. Yeah, little it's community. Your guys are the the best and the people that do this that takes so much time and effort and for that to send it to strangers we're strangers right for people to do that is amazing so i just want to say a big thank you to every single person who um is listening and loving the podcast we love doing it and um we feel better doing it sometimes because we do go through a bit of stress stressful times and this month's been a little bit stressful um Hey, before we go, remember, please get in touch at Nillyweds Podcast on Instagram. Um, contact at Nillyweds Podcast over email. We have TikTok, we're on YouTube, we're everywhere. And thank you so much. If you're getting engaged... Good luck. If you're getting proposed to... Go for it. If you're thinking about proposing... Go and do it. And if you're getting married, good luck. <laughs> we love you guys so much. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. That's, That's fabulous. So nice. What a great episode, just so, so good. Really Why are people so...